Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Notley video for the 21st of October here in 2021. What you're seeing is an aftermath of earnings, and this is Snapchat. And they reported earnings. Remember that we can look inside of the news tab right here on a watch list. If you're ever curious about what exactly the news was, the earnings was, and maybe why something is happening here in Think or Swim, that we would be done with a widget, a little tool down here, that is the news widget or the gadget, which is right there for the news, a live news. And then from that, just type in the name of the symbol of the stock that you would like to view, and you'll have the news right there. It is an earnings play, and there are some reasons, and we'll look at those, but Snapchat is falling precipitously. It is actually falling down about, we can quant or quantify or plot this from the 75 level, which is here on the daily chart. Snapchat is down at the moment, or plunged at least around about 30%. And that's a big move for Snapchat. So if you're ever curious about where a stock is going to report or maybe what to look at, you can always plot a one minute chart with after or extended hours on, take a look at the, the market action, the price action, and then draw a little trend line. And that trend line should appear on the charts that you're looking at. So for example, right here it's at 57, right there it would be. So unless something major changes, which of course you'll know after the video, as I'm recording shortly after the bell, Snapchat is currently trading here. But tomorrow's session into Friday, note these price levels, what the opportunities are, and where the stock would be. But right at the moment, at the moment, Snapchat's price is down to here. Now, Snapchat is not the only stock reporting earnings with a big downside gap. Intel is another, and that's a very similar type of gap. So we see this on the reported earnings. That's after the bell today. This again is a one minute chart. No reason just to look at the after hours activity. And we can also take a look into the individual stock and Intel's headline news. So that is what is occurring. So earnings per share, etc. But it's all about the forward guidance or how the market and the participants, the traders, big traders, respond. And despite and potentially beating earnings, you can always go inside of an Analyze tab to the Earnings tab. And we'll actually link these to the red symbol. And there is Intel. So as they report their earnings, it's not quite on the website yet at the end of the market hour, but it will be the actual versus Wall Street estimate. Nevertheless, just like Snapchat, not as large of a drop. It may look that way, but in terms of the price performance and price metric, Intel shares are down about, roughly speaking, 7%. So about 7% for Intel. Again, roughly speaking. And that will put the stock, at least for the moment, down to here. So a 52 per share was the downside gap. And that takes it back to a daily chart key level. And that level is 52. So those are some of the names that missed, or I should not say missed, that the stock missed and the stock dropped on earnings. But that was not the case for Tesla. Tesla reported this morning, Tesla reported recently, and that was before the bell. And Tesla had its big move up. There is the move, it actually reported after hours, but the morning session, it was a little bit down, was flat directly after the announcement. But as we see the morning session, there's the after hours looking back what the session was. There's the earnings. There's the report after hours. Stock was actually down and it spent the better part of the morning down until the morning bell. And Tesla traded very much closely to its all time high. That's about 900 per share. So a big earnings plays. Tesla is a volatile stock. Risk and defined risk option positions, butterflies, any type of spreads. That would be the going strategy for trading volatile stocks in any particular stock on earnings. Always to find your risk, do so with spreads ideally. And usually what we teach in Theo traded with Don and the other team members is some type of earnings butterfly logic. Tesla is probably not one you want to do because of the volatility and everything else under its volatile stock performance. And that is just shy again of that all time high. But outside of those, 
looking at our other stocks that had earnings and some of the outcomes, we had Union Pacific, just a quick glance at them. Stocks that had earnings before the bell were Union Pacific. There are the pre-bell or before the bell earnings and the outcome to the upside just about all day. That is Union Pacific, which made, I want to double check, I would think it made a new all-time high. And that is a trending stock getting stronger. And the earnings helped push it to a new high. AT&T, it's been under pressure on its daily chart. We'll see that. And the pressure has pushed it to the downside, but the earnings took place and the stock actually continued to fall after its earnings. Then we have Dow Chemical, just looking at the intraday performance and the activity from the earnings. Danaher, not, uh, not, a, not a surprise move, not a big move, nothing big on the chart. But again, we come to Intel, which is still at this moment at 52. Coming up next morning, Friday morning, American Express, which is at the top, just made a new high, Honeywell, and Schlumberger. A big one reports, and actually next week can be big on the earnings front, so continue to watch us with Theotrade in your evening videos and daily commentaries about stocks such as Facebook, we have Lockheed Martin, Microsoft, Google, and others are going to report next week. I believe we have a Fed week or a Fed Wednesday, a Fed meeting. So next week could be extremely volatile, and it could be the catalyst to take us back down from these just about all-time highs. And the S&P futures and the SPX, we spent the bulk of today's session trading around, it's right here, the weekly expected move. And that was our range morning. But again, this continued bullish creep or bullish drift took the SPX above its expected move. And that was a big breakaway into today's close. It was actually a flat session until the very end. But we have earnings again. Funds and traders are positioning, hedging and repositioning with respect to their delta and their accounts on the earnings plays. Nevertheless, the SPX, ES, and the SPY just almost alongside Tesla and others traded to a new all-time high. Not too long ago, we were down breaking support and then this continued rally continued uptrend did take precedence and we are back into that prior high and the nasdaq has a little bit under it the dow mini futures similar to the s p closed the session very strongly this is our dow mini futures we can take a look at the dia as a tradable etf and that also is pushing close to the high but the russell remains in its trading range so the rty the russell or the IWM, the ETF, that's tradable with options, or just the IWM itself, that does remain in a sideways trading range. So we do not have the type of bullishness or continued upside drift that the S&P has when looking at the Russell. And individual stocks such as big market cap name Amazon. Amazon still, we pull the chart back to show, trades in its sideways range. And a range can last many, many months, sometimes over a year. The last range for Amazon lasted from about late 2018 into early 2020. This one is from about July, and that's past a year now in a sideways trading range. And those levels are about 3,500 and 3,000. No relation to the Russell, but that same logic plays out. Consolidation, chop, sideways action, and the edge comes from going short into the top of the range and long or bullishly into the bottom or the lower bound of the range. And of course, that's a big picture context. Finally, we'll take a look at crude oil, which is leading the stock market higher. It's actually outperforming, at least in terms of being well beyond its 2021 high. So that is where the S&P is. And crude oil has outperformed that. So have other commodities which include natural gas, still in focus and still trending, but that is a steep pullback from a deeply or greatly overbought and extended daily trend. Gold is continuing to be sideways and continuing to be more of a trading range as is GLD, 
which is tradable again outside the futures contract and it just continues this downtrend or sideways type action finishing up with the bond market this is tlt which is pushing lower and the 10-year treasury note u.s 10-year treasury note continues to slide in price but that means that the tnx which is the opposite it is treasury yields is pushing higher so the treasury yield on the 10-year note is roughly 1.7 percent which is not quite a 2021 high just yet but it's not far away so continue to watch the yield push higher the 10-year treasury note push lower and equities back at the highs and leading stocks joining the fray earnings are still in play we're still in the middle of earnings season again facebook and other major technology companies report next week as always be careful and safe this is Corey Rosalman with tonight's Theo video update for October 21st, 2021.